Today, we'll be making a purse or a shoulder bag. The design includes elements that seem to float, a living hinge cover and magnetic snaps. My personal favorite version is made of wood, but you can also 3D print it if you want. As always, you can find all the files you'll need for free in the description below, but there are also some tricks in this video that will make assembly much easier. We have a lot to cover, so I'll just briefly touch on the design process for those wanting to create their own version. I started by imagining the purse flattened and drew it in two dimensions, experimenting with different prototypes. I really like the technique where fabric is attached to the wooden pieces. You can adjust how flexible it is by modifying the spacings between adjacent pieces. In the end, this didn't fit my design. The version I'm happy with consists of 5 outer faces and a lightweight skeleton, all cut from 3mm plywood. So let's get to work! Begin by cutting out the skeleton, as it's essential to cut these parts first. Since all 5 faces differ, you must know which skeleton part corresponds to each face. Notice that I painted one side of the wood with dark paint. This will make the skeleton less visible from the outside. Take out the parts from your laser cutter. Remove the pieces in between the frames. You should end up with these lightweight frames. Next, cut the other faces, making sure your material settings are perfect so the parts come loose when the laser finishes. This might take a while, especially for the living hinge top. Once cut, leave the parts in your laser for a little longer. The part should look like a solved puzzle and we'll use that. Apply plenty of glue to the painted side of one of the skeleton pieces. I use transparent all-purpose gel glue. Then, lay it onto the outer shell that's waiting in your laser cutter. The skeleton pieces are designed to hold the floating parts in place, so make sure it's aligned properly. Repeat this step for all five outer faces. For the front and back faces, ensure a 6mm spacing on each side, marked with the pencil. After gluing all pieces, remove the plywood sheet from the laser cutter, push the floating pieces out, and use tweezers or a utility knife if any of the spacers get stuck. Take the time and pay extra attention during this step. If any of the floating pieces move, shift them back to place. Add extra gel glue around the frame to make sure it's solid. With all 5 faces glued and access material removed, we can start assembling the purse. Lay the pieces on a flat surface and glue them one by one. Make sure to clean up excess glue as you go before it dries and that the edges are flush. You should attach the back side with the living hinge cover last. Make sure everything is in place and let the glue dry. Since the purse will be closed most of the time, it's wise to ease some of the tension of the living hinge. Close the purse with rubber bands, spray some water over it, then let it dry completely for an hour or two. This will reduce stress off the living hinge by adding a permanent bend to it. Sand away the sharp edge of the front face to ensure the cover doesn't bump into it. To make the purse look a little classier, sand all its edges until they are round and smooth. To add magnetic snaps, mark the center of the flexible top Glue a strong magnet to the other side of the living hinge and then attach one on the inside too. I used silver rectangular magnets to make the purse look a little fancier. You should avoid using colored glue like this grey epoxy glue I used. I had to do a lot of sanding to get rid of this mess. For the strap, you can either buy one, create something out of leather, or keep it simple like I did with a thin piece of brown fabric. You can also add lining to the purse but my wife said she prefers it this way. And with that, the purse is complete. I love the magnetic snaps in the living hinge and overall, the purse came out much more polished than I expected. My wife loves it, but a wooden bag might not be for everyone. 
I also made the 3D printed version for those without the laser cutter. It's nice, but it's a little bulky and the living hinge is less flexible than I would like it to be. That's all for today. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.